Welcome back to another video folks. Uh, this one is going to be a bit of a challenge for you and me. I'm going to see if I can get through every setup that you do in your rock climbing instructor assessment in 10 minutes. Haven't rehearsed this. I'm going to get it done in one take. I'm going to try my best anyway. Uh, there's a caveat here of course that um, you know I'm not actually going to use them and on your RCI assessment you would be using them for real. Okay, so that will obviously save me a bit of time and try and get it done in 10 minutes. Uh, and I'm, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to put prosthetics on to stay safe. And you must do that when you're on your assessment and when you're working, importantly, as well. It's not just you only do that on your assessment. Do it all the flipping time. Look after yourself. You're number one. And, uh, yeah, there's a list of caveats. Number three is we don't want to rush stuff at work or on an assessment. You want to be efficient and kind of always be working towards the end goal. And, and that leads to actually being quicker, doesn't it? Rather than going here, there and everywhere and changing your mind. So coming up with a good plan and then executing it is the way forward. So let's say you're on your assessment, you get asked to do a particular task, take a deep breath, have a minute, have a think, come up with a plan and then do it rather than just rushing off, okay? Um, There'll be some bits that we won't cover that in the RCI syllabus because I'm not going indoors, I'm not doing problem solving, I'm not actually going to do a lead climb and we're not going to actually get a group uh, be laying on a bottom rope. So it's just the setup part, okay, that I'm going for. So the 10 minute challenge will start as soon as I pick up a rope or something. It'd be really cool if, um, you know, watch these and have a go afterwards. But hey, let's start with uh, standard RCI stuff of a bottom rope. 10 minutes starts. Now, uh, so pretty much every setup, it's not, it's not like an instructional video per se, this one, uh, but I will talk through what I'm doing, otherwise it'll be a really boring video, won't it? Um, it's probably pretty dull anyway, it's one of mine. But figure of eight, stopper. Yeah, there's a whole video on stoppers in there because some boring person's done that, that was me as well. And I'd rather do it, it's just neat and it paints a picture. Uh, I'll go off this one. I'll, I'll try and do a couple of different setups uh, as I go along using different uh, slings or whatever, just for a bit of variety. Clip it in, do it up, done. No point going back and having to do it up, so do them up straight away. Get myself a power point over the edge, obviously I'd be staying safe. Do my overhand, get it all nice and neat. There we go, dress it properly. All four strands coming out the back, yes. Get myself uh, two carabiners. These boas work well for this job too because I'm being fully belt and braces. I get my climbing rope, clip them in, clip them in, do them up, gravity loaded, two of them, throw that down, get someone to pull on the rope so it all neatens up and I can check. And before I say to you, your assessor or you know you get people actually climbing on it, Give it a double check, or the rope's nice and neat, and is everything done up? Yes, 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 and yes. All equalised, all independent. I've got a nice angle, rope protectors, etc., etc. Right, that's done. Bottom roping finished. That was quick, wasn't it? Okay, let's neaten this up. Oh, got to be quick doing this bit as well to save some time. No idea if I'll do this in ten minutes or not. I will start from almost scratch every time, right? Uh, well, pretty much scratch every time, I reckon. Uh, next one, so we've done a bottom rope, let's do a top rope, okay? I can do this with two ropes, I could use a static and uh, a dynamic, let's just do it on one though. Do it on one climbing rope, a dynamic. So even though I'm trying to be quick, I'm still dressing knots properly, still getting them all snugged up, still doing a stopper. Uh, just about got enough tail for that. If I didn't have enough tail to do a proper stopper, I'd just do that knot again. I'm not going to do start doing weird stuff, especially in your assessment. Do not do weird things on your assessment, asking for trouble. Uh, okay, well, let's do a very slightly different setup here just because we can. Do that up. Okay, do a power point. This time it's on top of the cliff, not over the edge. And then, well, I've got a choice here, haven't I? I could, because of what I've done here, I'm gonna clip into this loop. Okay, and then I get my belay plate and clip into that loop as well. Back bar facing up, 
teeth facing up. Put them on belay and give it a final double check, but I think we're good to go. All instructor friendly, done up, done up, neaten that up, done up, done up. Great, away we go. Could have done a bunny ears, not there if I wanted two loops, but I'm happy with that. Could have had it a bit further back, gone in with my lanyard, put an Italian hitch on it and top roped through, through that instead. Either way, on an assessment, I just ask you why you chose what you chose. Any advantages, disadvantages? And I'd expect you to be able to sort of rattle off a few. There we go, so I've done a top rope now as well. What's next? Well, let's just say, because we're on the sort of the climbing side of things, let's go for imagining I've led up a route. So what I'll do is I'll tie into the rope, pretend I've led up, and that's obviously going to take a bit of time, but there's no point me leading up Sling Mountain, is there? Uh, there we go. So start off with that one, tie in. So at the bottom, there's not a personal climb on your RCI assessment. It's a lead climb. You could be working, taking people out climbing and then following you up. So what I'd expect to hear is you making sure they know what they need to know. Can they take gear out? Do they know the climbing calls? Can they belay? How have you checked they can belay? That's an interesting question. And then you can go off on your lead and expect you to be climbing it nice and confidently and perhaps chatting down to your, your person, telling them what you're doing, all those kind of bits. And then when you get to the top, you know, just a nice methodical, efficient setup here. So let's just go one, do it up. Obviously what takes a bit longer is finding the gear, right? Um, but I haven't got to it because it's all, all there already. Uh, Clovich, isn't it? Getting a big boa. Get him in, gate facing the sort of the next piece of gear. So I'm ooh, wasting seconds there. Get that neatened up, done. Get that one, another Clovich. I've decided that I want this third bit of gear in as well. So I'm gonna think about that in a second. If at all possible, right, it's good to have the third one in reach so I can just Clovich straight into that. Well, there we go. That's good, isn't it? All right, neaten that up. Da -da -da -da. What's next? Get that on belay, isn't it? Back bar up, teeth facing up. Take the rope in till it goes on them. What would I shout? I'm gonna shout down safe. You're not gonna shout down safe until you've fully built the belay, all right? That's important. Don't wanna see people shouting safe when they're not actually safe. I put them on belay then give them a shout of climb when ready. All right, off we go, happy days. Um, so we've done our lead climb, we've belayed them up, we've kept them safe all the way, well back from the edge as well, that's key. So everybody's a novice climber type people, really relative to you. Obviously it would just be one of your fellow SSEs doing all the belaying and that, but I still expect all that chat, remember it is not just personal climbing. So what I've done now, I've done a bottom rope, a top rope and I've done a lead climb we're going to imagine right that my climber couldn't get a piece of gear out I forgot to tell them how to get cams out or whatever and they've left one of my nice dragon cams down there 60 quid's worth of kit so I've got to go down and get it so I've got to set up an abseil and I could use the same anchors couldn't I if that was the situation get that dressed neatly again so this is just like a and so just for me, it's not for getting a group down or anything, it's just for me to go and get that stuck bit of kit that's in the crag. So we're gonna assume that I've decided I need to use all of these anchors again, uh, all these three anchors, and I've run out of slings, so I may as well do it all with a rope then. Okay, that was just an overhand, do them up. Terrible at the moment, needs adjusting for sure it does. That's fine, we can adjust it because it's an overhand. Alpine butterfly would be nice there if you uh, if you like an alpine butterfly. Who doesn't? But an overhand's good as well. There's one. I need this bit to do something as well though. So let's measure that out and then measure it from up there actually. Okay, overhand. This is obviously not the only way. Same as for all of these uh, setups. They are not the only way of doing them, but they work for my little sling mountain. That's not quite equalised yet, is it? So I just got to put a bit more rope through there. Uh, that one, there we go, let's try that. 
So there we go. So by the time I've loaded that, that's pretty bang on. Good. Okay, so I need to have sell myself down. So I want to do that safely, obviously. Haven't got my lanyard on me. Should have, but this, this will work. An extended abseil. I've done other videos on this. Great, we're in. I can use that to make myself safe. Go into that. That seems like a, a good point to go into. Uh, got a prosic. He says around their back. There we go. Because uh, we've got to have a prosic on, we've got to have a backup for the abseil. That's going to be a French prosic because it releases under load. So give it however many wraps it needs. Well, skinny rope. This blue one. Um, and relatively stiff prusik, so more the merrier probably on this setup. Does that lock up? Yes, it does. Look, pulling it, it's working. Get that clipped in. Could have done my loop through version, but I, I didn't. Then belay play onto the extended bit. Like I say, there isn't a, a whole video on this, I believe, somewhere on my uh, YouTube channel, so check that out if this is not making sense, but hopefully it is. And there we go, I think I'm in. So tighten that up, get it up to there, slide my prusik up, check. All right, done up, done up, done up. I'm still in on that, my improvised lanyard. Done up, done up, that's all good. Hold on to that, we don't let go now. Clip that back, can go to there, can go to there, can go wherever. Not, I don't really like it with gear loop in case it pulls tight, and you know, break a gear loop, but anywhere on there. And then off I go, I have sailed down. I get my stuck kit out. When I stop to get my bit of kit out, right, I need to go hands-free because it's really jammed in that they banged that cam in. So I've got a couple of options. My favoured one is just to wrap that rope around my leg like three times. There you go, hands-free. Loads of other options. You could just tie an overhand into there. You can start clipping it back, but it just seems a bit overkill. But there we go, there's Absoli. Oof, getting out of breath all this, uh, I nearly said rushing. Is it rushing? Well, it probably is sort of rushing because I'm trying to get a half decent time for this little challenge. I, I don't expect it to be quick because I'm just never around that quick. I'd rather be slow and steady normally, but here we are. I've set myself the target that 10 minutes. We'll see what we get. Uh, just trying to stay neat and tidy as I go. That's kind of key, isn't it, to being efficient is not letting things get into a mess. So tidy everything up all the time, reorganize before you do the next uh, setup, whatever that might be. Okay, so, so far we've bottom roped, we've top roped, we've led a climb, done that setup. We have abseiled down to get that bit of stuck kit. What haven't we done yet in the whole world of RCI setups? We haven't done the most complicated one which is the group have sale, isn't it? I'm going to leave that knot in there because that, that's kind of efficient. I might be cheating that, I don't know. Oh, look, look at that. Luckily, I had a knot in the end of my black static line already. So we'll take that little victory, do them up. Remember when you're putting these uh, screw gates in to clip them, then flip them, and then that ends up with the back bar against the rock, gate away from the rock, and they're gravity loaded. So that's good, and they're nice to clip that way. So clip it and then flip it. Uh, so group half sail. Da, da, da. Remember, what's going to be taking longer is finding the gear and stuff. Really, uh, I've got my three bits in there. I get this to a point, sort of close to the edge, but I don't want it right on the edge. There's a whole video on this as well. I want this back from the edge to give me a bit of space to work in, keep my clients safer for longer. Overhand, get it dressed as best you can it's a big fat lump of static so it's a bit trickier ah uh, so today I've, I've forgotten my lanyard i'd be annoyed with myself i'd tell myself off but i am going to improvise it today i'd much rather not be improvising this right i could just go and grab it it's only in the living cupboard there but uh, sort of maybe that highlights the point this works but it's not as good as a lanyard i mean look straight away that's slack so i've got to, Move this knot a bit, so inefficient. There we go. Get into that. I'd be like properly snug on that just because of what I'm doing. I'm not going to be super tight on it. Right, so I've got myself safe. I said I wasn't really going to bother with that. Um, done that. Is there anything I could have changed here? If you've watched the um, original video of this setup, 
you'll see that actually I want one of these a bit longer. And one of them is a bit longer, but it's not longer enough. So this has led to me making a bit of an error because of rushing. So that's, that's like a genuine mistake I've, I've made there. But I think it's actually quite useful. I'll leave it in the video because I think it's useful to highlight that we can all make those little errors if we're rushing. So as much as I'm sort of exaggerating the point here of trying to be quick, don't be too quick. I want one of these to be longer because it's better that way. So take the extra moment to sort it out and do it properly. Otherwise, what I've done is I've just wasted time, haven't I, by going all the way one way. I've got to come back and, and restart. So, you know, get it right the first time. Come up with that plan. That's what I didn't do, wasn't it? So I say, will we leave that in the video? Because I think it's useful to see. That's what I want. I want one longer than the other by a decent amount. So we're back in the game, having wasted how many seconds that was. Is it the end of the world? No, of course it's not, but it's not efficient, is it? I want HMSs, because there's going to be Italian hitches going on here. I'm going to get the other end of the rope. Excuse all the banging, I know that echoes lo loads on the uh, microphone, sorry. I've thrown that down, it's just off the floor. Okay. We're in. I've loaded it, so that's the end getting pulled, so it's already flipped through. Gonna tie him off. No idea how long this has taken. This could be like five minutes or 15 minutes. I really haven't a Scooby Doo. Uh, didn't set a stopwatch, so I won't be able to actually tell until I have a look at the, uh, the timer on the video in a minute. Right, said so before, I like to clip this back just to there with any old carabiner, keeps it neat. Uh, right. Then our safety, sorry about that, I'm going to sort that out in a second. Then our safety line, there you go, that will stop it banging now, is on there. Okay, so we're good to go, aren't we? I can put my client on there. They can put their uh, abseil device on here. What's going on though, is it's a right sort of mess of right. I don't know if you can see that floor bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flake it out, out of the way a bit for a couple of reasons. One. It keeps it all neat and tidy so that my clients aren't tripping over the ropes when I ask them to come near the edge. They're probably pretty nervous by this point as well, aren't they? Because abseiling is scary when you're doing it for the first time. It's pretty scary when you're doing it for the thousandth time. No one really likes it. It's just a means to an end, I reckon. Um, but just do this. It keeps everything nice and clear, gets rid of any tangles and stuff. It shows me as an assessor that if you can look after the little things like this, you've got like loads of head space to sort out the bigger things as well. So it's painting a nice picture. It's easier for you to check as well, right? Because you can just look at everything more clearly. And remember also, you could be managing an assistant. So you might actually be doing some sort of teaching stuff um, when you're out working, right? So it's important to get it all nice and neat and set that textbook example all the time. So I'd have all the ropes on one side, probably sort of this side if they're coming from that way, and then we're good to go. So immediately, right, that just looks a lot clearer by having sorted all that out. So take that time to do that. And just unflip from that. Before you say, come and double check my setup, you're going to double check it, right? Is everything done up? Da, 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 da. Does the rope reach the floor, etc., etc., etc.? So you're going to check and double check. So what else is there on the RCI in terms of setup? That's it really, isn't it? You've got other elements to the syllabus, a big part of which is actually using those setups, right? That's the bit that takes time and judgment and all the decision making and that. Obviously you're gonna be finding the gear itself, so that's gonna take time, isn't it? On Sling Mountain, well easy. But I mean, just have a look at the setups there, whatever the time was. I've rattled through them pretty quick, yeah? Because I've practiced a lot, and I've done them loads of times. It's like second nature. There's no reason they can't be second nature for anyone watching this video though. You can practice this till the cows come home, and then you can just concentrate on getting them in the right place and picking the good gear, keeping yourself safe, that's vital, right? So I don't expect everyone to turn up on an RCI assessment and be able to do every setup like super quick. I'm never timing people on an RCI assessment, right? I'm just looking for people to be sort of just generally efficient, right? You don't have to be superstar at this at an RCI level, but you do have to be efficient doing safe stuff and know how to use it all. 
And why does it matter? Well, I mean, the, the main thing is, I reckon, that by being efficient, you're just going to be nice and slick and chilled and be able to give your, your clients a really good time because you're not stressed about all this stuff. All this stuff is going to be just super easy to you when you've practised. And, and the other thing is that the best one in the world, a lot of RCI sessions are quite kind of time pressured. So, you know, the mini bus is turning up in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it might be, and you've got that time to set up. You, you don't want to be sort of wasting your client's time. You want to max out their experience of climbing. Climbing is ace and we're trying to get them hooked on climbing. So by being efficient at this bit, they get more time climbing, more time abstaining, whatever it might be, and have more fun. And that's great, isn't it? That's the name of the game. So yes, they're, supposed, they're there to have fun and to learn stuff, but remember safety first, get your prusik on or however you're going to say safe clip in, wear your proper lanyard, Again, I could have, obviously I could have paused the video and put a proper lanyard on, maybe I should have done, but sometimes I like to highlight things that, you know, uh, just it's real life. You know, I've forgotten a lanyard, of course I have. I've forgotten a whole harness to a climbing session before, then there's some improvising needed there. Um, it can happen to us all, so check your kit. There's a good message from this one, isn't it? Why don't you go have a go at that? Let me know how long it took you from start to finish covering off those few setups there. We've bottom roped, we've top roped, we've led a climb, we've uh, done a, a personal abs and we've done a group abs I think that was it. There you go, you just passed your RCI, well done. Thanks for watching, more videos coming up very soon.